So a couple of years ago, uh, it was uh, actually a good couple of years ago, about 14 years ago, uh, shortly after my ordination, I went to visit my grand aunt, my mother's aunt, with my mom and my uh, two of my siblings. So we were there anyway, and we were having the chats with Lizzie, is her name. And uh, so we were sitting in Kilfinnan there in her house, chatting away. And then she says, oh, I'll get the tea. Right, so up gets Lizzie, and in she goes to the kitchen, and she comes out, and she puts down there a, a mug in front of my, my mom and, a mug, and pours the tea in, and a mug in front of my brother and pours the tea in, and a mug in front of my sister and pours the tea in, and then puts down a cup and a saucer in front of me and pours it. And I nearly went through the floor, and my brother looked at me and went... <laughs> <laughs> as if to say, as far from cup and saucer, you were reared. Uh, and I said, oh, Lizzie Jane, you know, a mug, a mug will do fine, a mug will do fine. And then she left, and the, my family proceeded to laugh at me. And they still do. That was 14 years ago. And they still laugh on occasion now, uh, on occasion when, you know, I might come in with my breakfast in a bowl, and my brother will look at me and say, do you want a saucer with that? <laughs> uh, the idea was, I mean, back in the day, it was a bit maybe prestigious to be, to have a, a, a religious or a priest in the house. Uh, things have changed substantially these days, uh, where uh, a lot of young people who attend church or go to, uh, youth groups or prayer groups or anything like that do so against the wishes of their parents. Against the wishes of their parents. I remember, I, I told this story a couple of times, but I was talking to the choir director uh, in Thurles Cathedral, Cathedral there uh, for the youth group and um, the youth choir. And I said, how are things going? He said, yeah, yeah, they're good, good. Strange, he said. And I said, well, how would you mean strange? He said, a fellow came to me uh, for, uh, during practice there uh, and he said, sorry, I'm late. Um, just, you know, things, a bit, bit of trouble at home, bit of trouble getting away. He said, what do you mean, bit of trouble? And he said, well, my dad said to me, he said, you're not going to defy me. You're not going to defy me by going to Mass, are you? You're not going to disobey me by going to Mass, are you? He said, I mean, like, this kid's, what's he, 17? Do you know, and you have to make this decision already at that young age, like, that I'm going to have to fight for this faith, push forward... Uh, amidst this, 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 this cultural muck that's coming at us constantly and push against all of that and push against the will of my parents to go to Mass, to, you know, to practice the faith like that. It just takes such courage to do so. It takes such determination. And yet, like, their, their faith may be, may be just a kind of a, a very fragile state. It's just a little sprout over the ground. Like, it's not ready for storms yet. The storms will come. But, you know, give, give, give them a chance, like... Give them a chance to get a bit rooted. Give them a chance to, to, to mature a bit in the faith before they're, they're exposed to, to all of that. But that's what a lot of young people these days have to do. Practice the faith without the support of their parents. And it's, it's a huge challenge. A huge challenge. They're reading the gospel today. It's, as Jesus was speaking, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said, Happy the womb that bore you and the breast you sucked. And Jesus replied, Happier still those who hear the word of God and keep it. So, in, if, this, if the gospel was written by Luke from Balna Slow, um, it would be, your mother must be shocking proud of you. You know, your mother must be very proud of you. Like when they see Jesus preaching and teaching, this person calls out, your mom must be very proud of you. And I remember my, my mom was, 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 well, p- people told me that as well after my ordination. Your mom must be very proud of you. And I said, my mom is very proud of all of us. Uh, there's four of us in the family. My, my oldest sister is an absolute legend. <laughs> she, she's such an, an amazing woman of faith. She is, she's incredibly humble and prayerful uh, and a wonderful mother and wife. My brother uh, over, over in Plymouth, uh, such, again, such a, such a dedicated father. Uh, when we were growing up, everyone looked at him and said, oh, he'll be the priest. They looked at me and they said, we don't know what's going to happen to him, but it's not going to be good anyway. It's not, no, no. Um, and then my little sister, little sister, what's she now, 33, 34? Shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> um, she's old now anyway. Um, uh, yeah, she's a pharmacist and a great, great mom and wife. Like, so my mom, was, all, my, my mom was, was always proud of us all. Uh, my parents were always proud of us all. But the gospel today is, it says, happy the womb, womb that bore you and the breasts you sucked. So you're, again, you're, you're happy your mother. Your mother must be so happy to see you doing all of this. She must be very proud. But Jesus turns the attention onto something else, something more important. He said, well, 
yeah, that, that, that's nice for mom. She's, she's great and all, but there's something greater than just being happy, that being proud of your child. There's something deeper, something more important. Happy, happier still, those who hear the word of God and keep it. Those who hear the word of God and keep it. And the, the struggle we have today, I think, is some might argue, some might say, well, I've, I don't hear the word of God. I've actually never heard God speak to me. So in a way that makes me kind of exempt. You know, if God isn't telling me what to do, then I can do what I want because he hasn't told me any different. So if he's not giving me directions, well, then I have to make up the directions for myself. So if I get anything wrong, ultimately, it's his fault because <laughs> he didn't tell me where to go. I think I might, I might argue that all of us hear the word of God far more than we think we do, far more often than we think we do. It's just, it's not, it's, the, the voice doesn't come to us, sometimes it doesn't come to us in the way we would like. Do you know, at times we would like to hear a booming voice from heaven saying, thou shalt not go out tonight with those friends because thou knowest that thou will get, thou will get hammered. <laughs> so thou should avoid that company. You know, we would, that would be nice. It would be nice to have that kind of clarity. Uh, tends to not be the way that God works, though. He tends not to speak that way. The, the famous um, uh, episode from the, the book of Elijah, in, in, recounted in, in 1 Kings, where uh, the word of God is addressed to Elijah. Uh, he's in a cave, right? So he's, he's out praying. He's in the wilderness praying. And he hears the voice saying, go out and stand, before the, before, stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. So the Lord passed by. The, Lord, the Lord's presence was made manifest. Okay? But how, how was the Lord's presence made manifest? How did the Lord pass by? Remember, this is, this is the Old Testament, so Jesus hasn't taken on a human nature yet, so it wasn't Jesus who walked past. The, so God passes by. But how? 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 <laughs> like... Before Jesus became incarnate, if you're standing at the cave of a mountain, and you know what does it mean? What on earth does it mean? God passed by. The Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks to pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. So this, this massive wind that's breaking rocks, is that the Lord passing by? No. That's not him. Then the Lord, after the wind there was an earthquake. An earthquake, right? The very ground, you, the very mountain you stand on is shaking. But the Lord isn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. You can presume maybe lightning, things burning up around him. But the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, there was a gentle breeze. And then Elijah covers his face. In reverence, a gentle breeze. I think all of us would like the Lord to shout at us on occasion. It would be helpful. Stop that, ye Egypt. <laughs> would be great to hear on occasion before you're about to do something stupid. We'd love to hear that. That would be great. That would be really, really helpful. But would it actually help? Would it actually stop you? Would you actually listen to it? If you had a really clear sign. I mean, I, I, I've heard stories from people who, who said that, you know, they're struggling with what, looking at stupid stuff on, on the internet. And they'd say, when they're about to click onto the thing, the Wi-Fi turns off. Like it's, it's, like, it's almost like, this, this, it's, it's like the finger of God intervening in their lives. You know, I'm turning off the Wi-Fi so you can't look at this stuff. Mobile data. You know, and like, so there's a way around it. Like the Lord has intervened. The Lord has done something. He's put an obstacle in your way. Don't go there. But we push on through. So often the temptation, we know the temptation is here. We know what the right course of action is. We, we, we know that, that that still small voice is speaking within us. We already know what God wants. It's crystal clear. But the responsibility of how we act, what we do with that voice, that's on us. Hearing the voice of God is one thing, and I, I would argue we hear it far more often than we think. I would argue we hear it daily. 
It's, just, it's so constant, we don't recognize it as his voice. We're looking for something special. We're looking for something grandiose. We're looking for some sort of massive divine manifestation. Instead of that voice in your heart that says, don't. Or the voice in your heart that says, do. <laughs> Depending on what it is. The voice in your heart that says, not now. The voice in your heart that says, wait. The voice in your heart that says, I've got something better for you. Don't settle. Don't settle for this. The voice in your heart that says, forgive. The voice in your heart that says, give them a hug. The voice in your heart that speaks, I would argue, almost constantly. But we don't recognize it as his. Again, we were looking for something bigger. But I think the reason the Lord doesn't give us something bigger, I think the reason the Lord doesn't provide these divine manifestations is because if he did, our responsibility before him would be even greater. If we refuse to listen to him, if he gives us such a clear sign and we still choose our own will, we still choose sin, then our responsibility before him is even greater. So he speaks in a still, small voice, but he does speak. And that's why adoration is such a gift, you know, because everything else is set aside. Your phone, your distractions, your... I know it can happen that when, when, you're, in, when you're in adoration, you're, you're thinking, oh, Jenny, is, is today the little specials? Is today Thursday? Because there was a, a power drill that Jerry gave me. It is absolutely banjaxed, so I must go get one of those Power Fleet ones. They were fairly good. I think they were 34 in the catalogue. I saw, oh, that was last week's, though. Is the new catalogue out yet? Was that, was that this, this week's catalogue? Because they're, they're not great drills. Either. They're good enough for what I do. I mean, we, I have a picture to put up in the bathroom. They'll need seven mil roll plugs. I think I have a few outside. Although, the last time I looked, I couldn't find them. Um, so maybe on the way home, I can pop into Screwfix. What else do I need? Hanging brackets for the pictures. Oh, Jeepers Bridie will kill me if I don't hang that picture. Okay, so hanging brackets, seven mil roll plugs, uh, and then pop into Little. if it's Thursday. Is it Thursday? <laughs> Welcome to my brain, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you're planning, you're planning, you know, you're planning the shop in the head, like just, and, and you're not, then you kind of realise, gee, I'm in adoration. Sorry, Lord. Sorry, sorry. We're back in the room. Um, we're back in the room. Okay, we're back in the room. Okay, Lord, you deserve this hour. Okay, you deserve this hour. Okay, we're back. We're back. Right. Who do I have to pray for? And you know, and I think that hopefully <laughs> that's my battle in prayer. I don't know what yours is, but um, to to be present, to be present to the Lord, to stay focused on Him, to stay focused on Him. But in that quiet then that still small voice is much more easily heard much easier to hear it but step two happier those who hear the word of God and keep it and keep it and obey it that's what's on us the Lord speaks to you. Will you do what he asks?